Last Sunday, while you were worshiping and celebrating with Father Conan here, I headed to Eastern Washington with my sister and my brother-in-law, traveling with them as they drove their big RV, as you see parked next to the rectory, spend uh, several days camping over there at the state park at Lake Wanapum, which is just south of the I-90 bridge there at Vantage. Well, after we got all settled in and we're just gazing out over the lake, we noticed on the far side of the rocks uh, something unusual. So we got the binoculars out and took a look. And there seemed to be what appeared to be a, a hole of a boat sticking out of, of the water. But that, that's quite odd. We'll have to investigate the next day. And, and so we did. And as we were preparing to uh, launch our boat, of course, my brother-in-law is checking to make sure that we all have our life jackets on. And, and not just, just us, you know, he's, he's quite serious about this, that even the dogs have to have life jackets on. So my dog, Sophia, has, has her own life jacket. No life jacket, you're not getting in the boat. Okay, so we all got them on. And, and a beautiful morning, went to the far side of the lake, and there, sure enough, we found just the tip of a, of a boat, the hull of a boat sticking out of the water. And right next to it, uh, obviously broken apart from it, uh, was the bridge and quite a bit of debris, uh, a couple of empty coolers and, and the like, all kind of crowded together in this one spot. And we were certainly hoping and praying that to whom have, had ever befallen the fate of this tragedy, that they were okay. Well, a few days later, we come to find out, no, they're, they're not okay. There were seven, in fact, uh, in the boat a couple of nights previous, this cabin cruiser on the lake. They were out in about 7.30 p.m. Uh, the winds came up, as they do in eastern Washington, reached about 40, 50 miles an hour. There were six-foot waves that were being tossed about, and uh, they were completely unprepared for, for what caught them. And so uh, one of them uh, made it to shore to call for help, but when he did, uh, the boat was capsized, and it tossed, of course, everybody into the water. And sadly, uh, one woman and the two children on board drowned. And perhaps what was the greatest tragedy of all is that none of them were wearing life preservers. None of them. It just boggles the mind. I'm sure when they set out that day, a beautiful day, the wind was calm, the waters calm, and they thought certainly they have no need of them. But when it began to change, why then did they not exercise precaution and either get to shore immediately and or at least don the life preservers, the life preservers? Indeed, that's the very question I think we can ask of ourselves in light of the gospel reading today. Why were those who were listening to our Lord so incredibly thick with their own sense of self-righteousness, their own sense of contentment, that they didn't see that their life preserver was in front of them in the person of Jesus Christ? Somebody in the crowd at least asked the question, Lord, is, is it only a few that will be saved? And then he tells them, try to enter through the narrow gate. Many will try and they'll fail. They'll fail. And he proceeds to, of course, then tell that, that parable about how when the master of the house rises from the dead and, and he locks the house, uh, that there'll be those who find themselves outside and, and pounding on the door and asking for admittance and they're, they're turned away. How can this be? Well, first and foremost, uh, most people throughout history, when things are going well, have no sense of need to be saved. Be saved. Yes, while they believe that a Messiah, a Savior, would one day come, they didn't believe that he would come at their time, and, and for many of them, didn't really perceive the need for any salvation. Furthermore, they're also the mindset of the Jews thought that they alone would be saved in the life to come, and everybody else would, of course, be lost 
because the Jews alone were the chosen people, they are too also mistaken. Many also had it in their mind that uh, they would rely on their own resources and abilities to make things right with God and, and they themselves kind of affect their own salvation. Well, that's not possible. Jesus alone effects our salvation, for he alone is the incarnate word of God. He alone is fully God and fully human. He alone is the life preserver, life preserver. And so those who wish to be saved, those who wish to cross over and into the kingdom of God may do simply this. They need to don Jesus. They need to put on Jesus. Even St. Paul talks about that, about how we are called to put on Christ every single day of our lives. He is truly uh, the life preserver par excellence. And when we have Jesus on, we don't have to struggle and, and work and fight to, to get into the kingdom of God. He literally is there to float us in amidst the trials and tribulations of this life. Jesus is there protecting us, preserving us for the fullness of life uh, to come. But we have to make that choice. He doesn't make it for us. Jesus forces himself on, on no one. It's like every life preserver. It invites to be put on. But there's a problem, and we know it. When we go out on the water, as many of us do, we're not inclined to put on a life preserver. Why? Well, they're awkward and they're clumsy and often they're stowed away. Well, that's also true in the spiritual life. To put on Christ every single day, to be in fellowship with him, uh, there will be awkwardness to it. You will end up drawing attention to yourself, sometimes unwanted. Yes, so there may be a clumsiness about it at, at times. And as you move through day after day after day, we might even call out, God, is this really necessary? Everything seems to be going fine until it doesn't go fine. You know, at every boat launch there on the Columbia, uh, they have free life preservers right there. They're, they're hung up, big display. You, you can take them, borrow them, use them with, with a big printed sign. And it says, children don't float. Now, it seems like a no-brainer. But I think we need to recognize well, none of us float. So we, we can't presume that everything will always be fine, particularly in the spiritual life, when Christ is here to say, you need me. You need me to bring you into the kingdom of God. Every day. Don't wait to the last day because no one knows what that day is. That family did not expect any trouble that day. And yet, trouble found them, and they were unprepared. They need to only grab those life preservers when they set out. Learn from them, and every day before you set out, put on Jesus, the life preserver, to bring you into the kingdom of God.